Hi, today I thought I would talk to you about fabrics that we needle felt, mostly pictures onto, and how to transfer those pictures easily. Um, I don't do it the way that many do, which is with the prick method, where you prick through the picture, prick the holes, and then draw the lines, join the dots. I do the old school method of carbon paper transfer. It's just for me, it's so much easier. And um, it sounds like a really 90s way of doing things with all our technology, but it's just sometimes the old ways are just still the best. And why change it if it doesn't need to change it? So the first thing I'm going to talk about is the type of pictures and the type of mats. I feel really low down, like I'm at school. Um, okay, so this one here, this is just a really simple seascape. And this is actually just felted straight onto pre-felt. And I will show you the pre-felt. So pre-felt's quite stretchy and it's also really good if you want to needle felt onto it for a background, say for a picture or a piece, and then wet felt it. Absolutely brilliant for that as well. But that was just a really simple picture felted onto pre-felt. Um, you can get that in most felting supplies online. Mine was from World of Wool and that is, um, I think that's, I'm not sure if that's a Shetland or Merino, but it's a really nice, clean felt. So I'll pop some links. I'm not affiliated to any of them, by the way. I'll pop some links in the description. So that's the first one. And I've just mounted it on this. I mean, I love driftwood. Who doesn't love a bit of driftwood? It looks gorgeous. And that is North Sea Coast because um, I'm a Yorkshire girl and um, the North Sea reminds me of my dad. Um, so there we go. Now, the other picture I've done is this one. Now, this is a much more precise. So I've actually transferred, that one was done freehand. I've actually transferred the picture onto here. And this is a really nice sort of um, harbour scene, one of our sort of typical British harbour scenes. Now, the first thing I would say is if you're doing a bigger picture, use a foam mat with your topper on top of that just because with this being so flat and detailed, it just gives a really nice finish and it's not sort of, it's not undulating in any way. So you, you're getting the same pressure around the whole picture. And that's really a really good base. And that's just uh, upholstery foam. So that's really good. And I'm going to show you, that is actually on some calico. So let me find my pen and my transfer. So this is the picture I used to transfer it onto the calico. This is actually, but if you want to um, download the template yourself, you can go to the website. Again, I'll pop a link um, in the description and you can actually download these straight away. The cheapest chips, I don't charge much for them. One pound, one pound fifty, something like that. And you get loads of other, you know, you get, you get more photographs and, you know, sort of guides and what have you. So this is the calico that I use. This is just really cheap calico. I think I got that from, ooh, it might have been Joe Mill Felt. They're a brilliant supplier. You can get your um, pure wool felt squares or your blended squares from them as well. So they're, they're really good. And all you do is you pop down your linen. In fact, you don't need that to start with. You need a hard flat surface. You get your 90s carbon paper. You lay that down on your linen or your calico. You get a pen and then you just start to trace. I'm just going to do this really quickly. I mean, you don't even have to do this carefully. And remember all of these lines are going to be covered anyway. Let's just make sure I've done it the right way. Ah, you see it's coming through really nicely. You don't even have to press hard. So this is how I transfer my pictures. And I really like this. And if you're doing that, you could be doing portraits, um, animal portraits, any type of picture. It just works 
so well and you can guarantee anyone can trace you don't need to be artistic to do this anyone can do a, a bit of tracing there you go and can you see how that's transferring brilliantly onto that sort of cheap calico and that you can felt really well onto that if you're not used to um needle felting pictures if you're used to three-dimensional felting then it'll feel really weird to start off with but once you get going you'll absolutely love it and this is i would say a six to eight hour project so a couple of afternoons you can do that in and, and the trick with this one is these dark edges really sort of throw the picture and make it pop so that's really what makes this work you do all the the colors the sea the, the tops the houses and then you go around and every outline is filled in with a darker contrasting wall so that's what makes it work and then the other thing you can use for exactly the same thing is this gorgeous belgian linen here it is now, if you've bought anything from me in the past, when I was actually selling the physical products, you may have some of this. And this, I stole this from my husband's art collection. And this is beautiful Belgium, lin Belgium linen. It's absolutely gorgeous. And you would normally use it for, for painting onto. Um, you might prime it, um, or you, know, you would prime it if you were painting onto it, especially if you're using oils. But I use it, have been using it, um, for pictures and this if you're doing something really special or if you're a business and you're doing commissions then this stuff is absolutely gorgeous I got this in London, London years ago um, but um, it's a Belgian linen and it is just so worth the money especially if you're doing really special pictures commissions it's part of your business you're selling them as part of your business and again copy paper on I'm going to do a little bit because I'm going to be tight with this. I don't want to waste it. Draw your lines. And that should have transferred really well. Let's just pop the boat there. Let's have a look. There you go. So you can see you've got those lovely lines to follow and they all will be covered up when you actually needle felt onto them. I know, um, is there some washable fabric pens? I'm not quite sure, but I just I just prefer this method. It's so much easier. Like I say, it's a bit old school, but works for me every time. Now, if you were to try that, let's have a go on the pre-felt. I normally do this by hand, so I've not really tried this on here, so we'll see, we'll see what we get. The pre-felt is much softer, so you can't press as hard because your pen's likely to go through the picture. Not that that really matters, just make a, a second copy before you do this. Let's have a look, see what we've got. Yeah, that doesn't work. So for the pre-felt, I would just use something like this, like a, a Sharpie, and then you would just have a picture as a guide and you would just create sort of lines um, that could be the sea, the sky. So you're just sort of splitting it into sections and then you're working in your sections. So if it was fields, it could be different fields and hills, um, you know, your sheep, you know, it's more about placement. So you wouldn't be using this for something as specific as this. So every fabric has its uses and then if we go back to the actual wool felt, which most of you will have in some form or other, let's try this on there as well. And this should work because it's a much firmer piece of fabric. And I'll also show you what else I use this for. So we just draw some lines down here, down here, down here, put the door in there few windows, see if that's transferred. Yeah, so you've got to transfer. It's much, you're going to have to press a bit harder because it's much, much lighter. But 
what it does do is give you a little guide if you can see that so I can kind of then draw that onto there with the guide that it's given me I don't know if you can see that so it doesn't work as well but it does work so again, that might be something you want to use the prick method for, where you're, you're pricking through the picture and then you're joining the dots. But if you, um, if you press down on this, then you will get the lines coming faintly through and you can use that the same way you would join the dots. So you can decide. But what this is fantastic for is um, if you're doing little brooches or um, something like this, you could pop in a box frame then this is the perfect backing to do that on. And what you would do is, I have um, templates for these as well, and you would cut a square. But when I used to do these as a kit, you would get a square of fabric. <coughs> Excuse me. You get this square of fabric, you would have a template, that you would cut out and then you would draw around that template so you just had the basic shape and then you could use any mat you wanted I'm going to go with this rice mat here and then you start to add your wall that way and that line gives you something to work with, make sure that the size and proportion is going to be correct. And that is, that is, believe it or not, that's an hour's work. That's all it is. And you, it's, you can do this if you're a beginner. You might not get the exact result, but you've got to allow yourself to be a beginner first. Remember, remember what I always say, start on chapter one, not chapter three. If you start halfway through the book, it's really confusing. Same with needle felting. And this is fantastic. This is 100% wool. You can get wool blends, but I do like the 100%. And then you can see it comes through the back. There. And then again, the song thrush, thrush brooch is done in exactly the same way. So those are my sort of top tips for transferring. If you do ask me anything you want in the comments, if there's something you're confused about or something I haven't clarified or something I haven't talked about, then feel free to ask me. And then I just wanted to talk to you about these frames. These are from Hobbycraft. Um, and these are, this is a magnetic frame. So that just pops open at the front. And all I've done in there is I've just popped a picture in, backed it, and I haven't even stuck that in. It just sort of sits in because it's the right size. And they are absolutely gorgeous. And they stand themselves so you don't have to mount them. Uh, this is another Hobbycraft one, and if you get them in the sale, they're all quite often in the sale. They are so cheap to buy. That's a lovely box frame. It just opens up from the back, and it's quite deep, so you can get some real depth to your pictures. And again, that one hangs up, but you can just rest that against a wall, and that will sit nicely. And then the last thing I wanted to mention was hessian. Yes, you can needle felt onto hessian. Just make sure that the weave isn't too open. Um, you want you know, a nice close weave, but not too thick. Um, Best place I've been buying my hessian from that I use to make my mats and to needle felt onto is Joe Mill Felt. They have the best um, hessian for rice mats and for felting onto. And I think you buy it by the meter, but it's, it's quite cheap. So if you want a few things from there, order all at the same time. But they're really good for wholesale as well. So if you're a business, brilliant for wholesale. I hope that's encouraged you to get trying to um, Paint with wool and get yourself some needle felted pictures done. They're absolutely brilliant. If you could subscribe, follow the channel, it makes a massive difference. It really, really helps. And then I can teach more people and I have more time to get on here and teach you as well. So thanks very much.